Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNumPhoto.com and today I'm going to be talking about a little Russian rangefinder that I got from the car boot a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is the famous or infamous Zorki 4K Russian 35mm rangefinder camera. Um, now, you could almost say this was really highly anticipated, uh, highly anticipated by myself um, to actually manage to find one of these cameras at the car boot sales, uh, one that works, and then actually go out shooting with it. Because uh, if you haven't heard of the Zorki range before, or the Feds or anything like that, they're um, copies or variants, if you like, of Leica cameras. And obviously, Leica in the in the in the camera world is known for. Um, being some of the best best cameras you can buy. So what happened was after the end of the Second World War, um, the Russians took back to Russia um, many of the factories and the machinery and the engineers that had been used um, in the Leica factories, and then used that technology um, to develop their their own cameras, um, which would be available to to lots of people. And throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, and uh, and 80s, these um, it's probably a little bit unfair to call them copies, but these variants, really, of, of what Leica had been working on and came, came along. Um, so something like the Zorki 4K, you could say, is a variant on something like the Leica 3, um, in the fact that it's a, what we would call a coupled um, rangefinder 35mm camera, but more, more to that. So nobody's saying that the build quality or the image quality of these is up to that of the Leica, but as we all know, it's just as easy to take a blurred, uh, crappy fo photograph with an expensive camera as it is with a cheap one. And just the fact that these are copies of um, Leica 3s kind of means it's always been something that, that, that I fancied shooting with. Um, one of uh, my inspirations, if you like, photography-wise has always been Henri Cartier-Bresson and his work, and he used to wander around with a little Leica. Um, and they're also, as I said before, they're a rangefinder camera. Which is, which is quite unusual in, in the way that it works. For me, anyway, who's used to manual focus SLRs or autofocus SLRs and DSLRs or zone focus cameras, zone focus cameras as well. So this little beast I picked up for £20 from, I think I got it from the Bridge Mary car boot sale in Gosport. And what happened was I actually saw it one week and had a look at it, but didn't really know much about it. I knew it was a Russian camera. Um, um, and the guy wanted £20 for it, which is a little bit more, ex little bit expensive for what I spend. I normally don't spend more than £10 on on a camera from the car boot sale. So anyway, I went home, researched it, and you know, lots of people seem to really like uh, Zorkis and Feds, but um, they're also notorious for not working because the build quality and the quality control within um, uh, the Russian factories was often... Uh, not as good as their Western counterparts, let's put it that way. And one of the pieces of advice you'll always come across if you're looking for a Zorki or a Fed or any of these Russian cameras is it's always best to get one that looks like it's worn and uh, been used because at least that means it probably works. Whereas if it's nice and shiny and mint, probably meant that it never worked in the first place out of the, uh, out of the factory. So as you can see, it comes with one of these ever-ready cases. So let me take it out of that just so we can have a bit of a bit of a closer look at the camera and what I'll do at the end of the video is you'll see quite a few um, example photographs color and black and white that I've taken with the camera over the last month or so um, and I'll also uh, have some closer pictures of the uh, the camera as well so as you can see it's a fair size um, it takes 35 millimeter film um, the first thing you probably see on the on the front is that is the lens and this particular one has got a Jupiter 8 f2 50 millimeter lens so you know a, a standard focal length and you know with the with all these um cameras the idea is again they have the screw mount so you can take lenses off on and off and, and get different lenses for them um it's a fully manual camera um so you set the shutter speed and the aperture uh, iso chosen by the film you put in um there's no built-in light meter so it's necessary to use your own uh, separate light meter, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. 
Um, it's nice and chunky, it's an all metal body with, um, I think it's probably some sort of Bakelite or plastic bit in the middle. Um, the Zorki 4K, uh, in difference to the 4, actually has a, um, has a, has a wind on like that uh, to, take, to, to take it further. Um, and um, yeah, it's, overall it's a nice little camera. Um, on the back it says made in USSR, which is quite good. And then we've got our serial number on the back as well. I haven't looked to see when this one was probably made. Probably in the in the 1970s, um, I would have thought. Um, on the lens itself, we've got usual um, f2 uh, through to f22. And basically, you just spin the front of the lens to set the aperture. It's stepless as well, nice and smooth. It looks like there's quite a few aperture blades in there as well to make it nice and smooth. Um, and then we have our focusing on our camera, on our... Um, our lens there and as you'll see in the in the close-up video in a minute you'll see we've then got our <coughs> depth of field distance gauges on the top of the camera we've then we've got our um, diopter adjustment which is there so you can adjust the viewfinder for your for your eyesight if you're a little bit short-sighted or long-sighted and then we've got the um, wind back knob there which you can pull out to then then run run the film back obviously we've got a shutter release there um, and then what we've got on the top here is our speed selector. Now, with these Russian rangefinders like the, the Zorki and the Feds, it's really, really important that you never, ever change the shutter speed without cocking the shutter. <coughs> Excuse me, you'll have to forgive me, I've got a bit of a cold, a bit of a flu at the moment. Because if you do, that can damage the, um, the selector for the shutter speeds. I mean, you can't uh, select uh, the, the uh, slower shutter speeds. Because this is an old mechanical camera so what you do is you select the shutter speed there sorry you won't wind the camera on and then basically you pull out this bit and then you can select your shutter speed and when you actually take a photograph if you look at the top <coughs> excuse me you can see it spin round um, it's also very easy to take um, uh, multiple images on the same frame by mistake with the camera because if you only take it halfway put the winder it will still take a photograph at one of the slower shutter speeds you need to make sure you pull it all the way around before you press it that way so as I said to, to start off with this is a rangefinder camera um, rather than a zone focus or an SLR so when, when you're looking through the camera to take a picture you're looking through this viewfinder here not through the lens itself and this enables the cameras to use nice and small lenses and be, be quite small themselves as well so the, the way that you focus is when you actually look through there um, right in the middle of the, the viewfinder there's like a, um, a yellowy goldy secondary image and that, it, that is produced by this tiny little window here and what happens is as you turn the focus ring backwards and forwards those images kind of cross over and meet and when they completely cover each other that's when you know you're in focus um, and with a little bit of practice it's actually very easy to do and very very fast as well um, and the big advantage of you doing it that way rather than having to um, manually focus like on an SLR is that you um, <laughs> If the image is not sharp, you know, say you've got glasses on, or you, or it's difficult to see, um, it doesn't really matter because all you're doing is you're just lining two images on top of each other. It doesn't mean if they're slightly blurred, um, and, that, and that's fine. It works very, very easy, and I was very pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to do. Obviously, you can also zone focus because you've got all your distances on your lens on the front as well. But um, after a few goes, I was becoming quite proficient with with using the. Uh, the uh, rangefinder focusing system and it you know works very very well and I've got lots of plenty of sharp photographs out of this camera <coughs> in fact the only real blurred ones are the ones where I was really pushing the shutter speed down too low to like a 30th and a 15th of a second but where I was um, hand holding it, it um, and holding it that way as well you probably noticed actually that it doesn't have any tripod lugs on it as well which can be a bit of a disadvantage because if you haven't got a case then you've got no way of carrying it around. However, it does have a tripod mount on the bottom, but I think that's a non-standard size, so you could then use something like an R-strap or any sort of bandolier type strap um, to carry it that way. Overall, as you can see, probably you'll see from the photographs at the end of the video, um, it takes nice images. 
the viewfinder itself is meant to give you an approximation of the, of the field of view that the 50 mil, <coughs> excuse me, that the 50 mil lens gives you. Um, I don't think it's that accurate, um, <coughs> and especially when you start getting closer to your subject, there's no parallax correction. You know, like on a Olympus Strip 35 or the like, or lots of compact cameras. There's a secondary box or different lines that you use to line up your image when you get closer. There's none of that with this particular viewfinder and I tended to find that it would as things would get closer they would be more off to the left so you'd have to kind of uh, uh, allow for that by, by moving the moving the camera that way um, but overall over the last few weeks I've put um, a roll of colour film for it um, excuse me and they came out beautiful um, and I've done two rolls of black and white so far which I've which I've developed myself, uh, they come out great. And this is, you know, it's a really, really nice camera. I, I love manual cameras where you don't have to put batteries in them. Um, because you know, ultimately, they're very, very reliable. You're not going to be stuck in a situation where the battery's gone flat um, and you can't use it. Um, and so, yeah, I've really enjoyed, really enjoyed using it. I think that cameras like this Sorky 4K, the Trip 35, uh, the K1000 SLR, um, the SRT101 SLR, you know, all these kind of manual clockwork cameras really, really do it for me, and I really uh, enjoy shooting with them. <coughs> so, what we'll do in a minute, we'll go in and I'll show you a little bit closer uh, of the camera. So, what what is involved if you want to shoot with one of these cameras? Well, first things first, obviously, what I tend to say, as soon as you get it out, um, you flip open your everyday thing, you want to wind the film on because you're probably going to be changing the shutter speed. Um, and then you may well want to take a meter reading. Um, now you can get, you, know, you, can, you can use uh, Sunny 16. So if it's a sunny day, you're outside. Um, all you have to do is just set your uh, aperture to, <coughs> excuse me, to f16, and then your shutter speed will be one over what your film speed is. So if I've got some 100 speed film in there, then my shutter speed will be 100th of a second. However, you may well want to use a light meter. This rather uh, poetically, I think, is a Leningrad 4 light meter. And so with this, so I'd, I'd get my camera out and then I would meter the scene. And let's say it said, uh, had an exposure value of say six and a half. So I then turn the dial to six and a half. And that then tells me I can look at all the different shutter speed and um, aperture combinations. So if I want to shoot at f5.6, it's a 60th of a second. So then, I can then, I'm making sure I've wound the camera on, <coughs> go to a 60th of a second, and now I'm ready to set my aperture, f5.6, move my finger to the focusing, go up, do my focus, and then <coughs> take the photograph. Now, if you're going to put the camera away, don't wind it on, because chances are when you go to put it back in the case, you're going to fire off a frame. If you're going to take another one, just wind it on straight away, so you don't accidentally change that shutter speed without cocking, cocking the shutter. It's that easy. Now, a quick word back to light meters. The problem with some of these old light meters is they're old. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and they may well not be that accurate anymore. Um, in fact, this one here, this Leningrad one, um, as you can see, it's got the plastic cover on it. Now, I'm pretty sure you're only really meant to use that when you're doing instant light meters. So when you're kind of going up to somebody and putting it like that not reflective but the way that I've calibrated this one is um, just using my um, DSLR so I just went out in the garden on a <coughs> excuse me on a sunny day looked at what the re the meter reading was on my DSLR and then made then adjusted this um, <coughs> meter so that so that it was the same um, and what I found was that if the ISO was set the same so 100 in here and 100 on the digital SLR um, if I put the plastic cover on, then this gave me nice accurate readings. And that really bore out on the colour prints first and then the black and white prints as well. Um, <coughs> so again, if you're using a manual uh, a light meter, especially an old one, make sure you check it against something that you know is definitely right before you go wasting um, rolls of film through your camera. <coughs> stop this segment of the video before I, before I cough anymore but overall so there we go 
the Zorki 4K, the Russian rangefinder, the Russian Leica, perchance. Um, really nice cameras to shoot with. Look out for them. You can find them on eBay. Make sure they they say they're working. Um, and you know, it's your chance to shoot with a Leica light camera for a fraction of the budget. And the one thing I would always say is, you know, if you th if you've ever got gear lust and you're thinking, you know, God, I've got to have that really expensive camera. I've got to shoot with a Leica. You know, I've got to have the best. I've got to have a Hasselblad. One of the best things you can do is actually go to Flickr and go to the groups for those particular cameras, like a Leica M8 or a Hasselblad system or something like that, and have a look through the group photos uh, in, in the pools. And although there'll be lots of good ones, you can bet your bottom dollar there will be lots of underexposed, overexposed, and blurry photos as well. Just as many with the expensive cameras that you get with your, your, your cheaper cameras as well. Um, so overall, the Zorki 4K, this one's going to be sitting on my shelf ready to be shot with um, I really enjoy it and uh, yeah I put it up there with like my SRT 101 uh, the Pentax K1000 <coughs> the OMN2 um, chip 35 all that sort of stuff a good mechanical manual 35mm camera um, that uh, seems to be pretty much bulletproof and takes great photos right so let's have a look a closer look at the camera thanks Okay, I've kind of stopped coughing a bit now, so let's have a closer look at the uh, at the Zorki uh, 4K Russian uh, rangefinder camera. Um, as you can see, here's the here's the top of the camera. So you know, I'll say that warning once again before you ever change the shutter speed. Always make sure the camera's cocked fully, and then what you can then do is you might be able to just be able to see the different graduations around there for different speeds you take it out change the shutter speed <coughs> and then you can um, you can fire away there you can see made in USSR on the back of the camera <coughs> so what we're going to do next is we're going to have a go at loading some film into the camera and then uh, and then taking some shots so first things first let's flip her upside down under the bottom catches, turn them around. First time I did this, actually took me quite a while to get into the bottom of the camera. Wasn't really sure what I was meant to be doing. The bottom comes off. Now, these cameras are very, very basic, um, but what they do show you a lot of the time is how um, 35 millimeter manual cameras do work. And one of the things you've got to do when you're um, loading film and then rewinding it is you have to adjust this little knob here <coughs> and what that little knob does is it disengages these wheels here so see that's the shutter button there so as you can see the kind of winding sprockets there are, are all loose so whenever you're rewinding film you've got to make sure you've turned that um, clockwise in so it's nice and low and then when you do it the other way the wind winding sprockets are now fixed so let's put some film in um, I'm doing this through my viewfinder on my uh, on my little video camera so forgive me if I'm a bit candid while I do it um, oops <laughs> not really treating the camera very well am I there we go so I've got it to take up now, nice and tight, maybe not in the most professional type of way. That's done, and it's on the sprockets there as well. So all we got to do now is just put the back on. Like so, flip these around. And we're good to go. times now it does actually have a counter on the um, camera and it's just this little arrow there and what you can do <coughs> is if it doesn't quite line up at the moment like it doesn't on this one you can just take that and just spin it round 
to zero. And then what should happen is every time you take, time you take a photo, it will move on slightly that way. This one just needs tightening up a little bit. Now, there we go. So the camera's, camera's good to go. Nice and easy. So, as I said before, you would get your camera out. You would then meter your scene with your meter. With this particular meter, it gives you an exposure value on the top. And then you turn this um, dial here. And then that tells you along here, <coughs> excuse me, the combinations of apertures and shutter speeds. Obviously, I've already put in the... Uh, the ISO of the film on that so then I can go to the camera I can then set my aperture make sure it's wound on set my shutter speed look through the viewfinder do this uh, viewfinder focusing with the rangefinder and then the camera is ready to take a picture and there we go so first things first uh, apologies for all the coughing and spluttering in the video um, if you're still with me thank you very much um, and um, if you fancy getting one of these uh, Russian rangefinder cameras do they're a great laugh to shoot with and they produce excellent quality photos what I'll do now is on the end of the video <coughs> you'll see a load of photos um, that I've taken with the Zorki 4k Russian Leica rangefinder my name's Rob from RobLandPhoto.com. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video um, and if you do enjoy the videos on uh, YouTube or wherever you're watching this particular uh, piece of work remember there's loads more great photography stuff at robnonphoto.com that's www.robnunphoto.com <coughs> excuse me and over there you'll also find the SCL photography podcast so if you're into downloading podcasts you know you can go to iTunes or uh, Feedly or wherever you get your, your podcast and just search for SCL Sierra Charlie Lima Photography Podcast and you can download and listen to me currently the podcast is uh, going out about once a month um, and then it goes up to sort of once two weeks or even, even once a week um, if I've got, got the time you can email me scalespeeder at gmail.com that's S-C-A-L-E-S-P-E-E-D-E-R at gmail.com and remember we've got a Flickr photo group as well so if you go to robnonphoto.com and come down on the right hand side you'll see there's a link to our Flickr photo group come along it's free to join post some of your photos and, and uh, have a go in the discussions brilliant hopefully I'll see you there thank you <laughs>